Welcome back to part two of our female reproductive series. In this video, we're gonna be talking about ovulation. In our previous video, we broke down the timeline of the menstrual cycle or the female reproductive cycle in an average of about 28 days. But we only got into the first few days with period cramps till about day five or six. We needed to finish up that first half, which was referred to as the follicular phase. And that's going to be going into this topic of ovulation. Now again, if you missed that video, check it out. It'll help the rest of this stuff make more sense. But let's jump right into this video with this question. Let's first talk about this idea of why do they call it the follicular phase? Now we are trained to think of hair when we think of the word follicle, because yes, we do have hair follicles that hair grows and erupts out of. However, women have these structures called ovarian follicles. So if we were to zoom in to this structure here that we refer to as the ovary, just zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, we would see these tiny little bag-like structures, essentially a circular or spherical cluster of cells. And inside of that follicle is a cute little egg that we call an ovum or an oocyte. So think of this, when you associate an egg, you kind of need to associate with what carries it, which is a follicle and there are tons of follicles inside the ovary. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Egg is inside follicle, multiple follicles are inside each ovary. Now a woman is born with about one to two million eggs and so therefore follicles. When puberty happens, they're left with about 300,000. So take a look at this picture. What you're seeing is an ovary with one follicle and therefore an egg inside the follicle. Remember the follicle is just a little cluster of cells on the outside creating that circle and the egg inside of there. And what's happening is this primary follicle that you can see at point number one is starting to get larger and larger and larger as it goes from two to three to four there and it's maturing. Now this is, illustrates a really important point because what has to happen during the first 14 days of the female reproductive cycle is that some of the follicles are going to have to mature. But I need to differentiate between these two terms. There are these follicles called primordial follicles versus a primary follicle. In that picture, you're seeing a primary follicle. So primordial just means first or beginning. And the majority of the follicles and therefore the eggs inside the follicles are considered primordial follicles. Remember that figure we mentioned about 300,000. But what changes a primordial follicle into a primary follicle. What happens at the beginning of each cycle, this follicular phase, is a handful of those primar primordial follicles become primary follicles, about six to 12 of them. So say you've got two to 300,000 primordial follicles just hanging out in the ovary. The beginning of the female reproductive cycle during this follicular phase, a handful, six to 12, become primary follicles. Now what causes this to happen? Funny you should ask, it has to do with hormones. So the first two hormones we're gonna talk about are follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Follicle stimulating hormones, a pretty good name for a hormone that's going to stimulate the ovarian follicle. However, these hormones aren't released from down below. They're actually released from a brain structure or a structure within the brain called the pituitary gland. Let's take a look at that. Here, I'm probing this cool structure called the pituitary gland. This thing is nicknamed the master gland because it secretes all sorts of different hormones. But we're only gonna focus on those first two, like we mentioned, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now what's crazy to think about is that these have to get into the bloodstream so they can actually get down to the ovarian tissue and have their effect. So the pituitary gland releases them into the bloodstream since blood vessels go everywhere eventually those hormones will make it down to the female reproductive structures. What's also helpful to see is this graph. Now, if you look at this chart here, this graph, you can see the levels of follicle stimulating hormone in blue and the levels of luteinizing hormone in red going throughout the 28 day cycle. Now there's a huge spike right before ovulation on day 14, we'll get to that in a minute. But what I first wanna focus on is that little blip at the beginning during the first few days and that kind of correlates with the period. So those hormones go up just a little bit and what that does is creates this pulling from the primordial follicles. 
So of all those primordial follicles, because of that little blip in follicle stimulating and luteinizing hormone, some of those primordial follicles get pulled into becoming primary follicles, about six to 12, what we mentioned a little bit earlier. So now we've got six to 12 follicles that are going to start maturing throughout this first 14 days. Now I know that picture just showed one and I'll explain why it just showed one. But we start with about six to 12 combined between the two ovaries that are potentially going to mature over the next 14 days. So I want to have a little bit of a checkpoint here. We have six to 12 maturing follicles at this point through this first 14 days. Do we want all of those to mature and to have an egg be released? The answer is no, not unless you want to have six to 12 babies at the same time. Now there are exceptions. People have had triplets or quintuplets, but typically a female will only have one follicle fully mature. What happens is one of those six to 12 follicles tends to grow a little faster than the others. And the others tend to disintegrate over that 14 day period. And that's why that picture was kind of more simplistic. It was showing you that one follicle that grew faster than the other six to 12 potentially and becomes what they call the dominant follicle. That dominant follicle will move all the way to the edge of the ovary and kind of wait, await for something to happen around day 12. So let's go back to that chart one more time. Look at what happens close to day 12 with luteinizing hormone specifically. You get this huge surge of luteinizing hormone and yes, a lesser degree of a surge from follicle stimulating hormone, but that big surge essentially signals ovulation. And what happens is, is this egg is released from the ovary and now we're into this next phase of what's gonna happen to this egg. And we'll answer that in a minute but there's one other thing I need to jump back to. Remember, we had originally six to 12 follicles starting to mature. And again, we know only one of them fully matured, but out of those six to 12, as they're starting to mature, they start releasing estrogen. So estrogen's coming out of these follicles and therefore the ovaries, and these levels tend to spike up. Take a look at another chart. This other chart is showing you estrogen in blue and progesterone in red. You can see progesterone stays relatively low in that first 14 days, but look, about, look at it about day six or seven, what happens to estrogen. That correlates with the same time that those ovarian follicles are starting to release their estrogen. That's where it's coming from. And that's really important to starting the process of building up the uterus again. We'll jump up to the other graph and you can see right around the same time day seven, the uterus or the inside lining of the uterus is starting to build up again. And that's a really important function of those ovarian follicles releasing estrogen before most of them actually disintegrate or don't become the dominant follicle. There is one other purpose to having the estrogen spike prior to ovulation. I'm gonna have you kind of think about that for a second and see if you're right by the end of the video because I'll address that at the end of the video. But just kind of think about is there any reason to maybe spike estrogen levels right before ovulation besides just building up the uterus? Kind of think about that and we'll talk about it at the end. And what I meant by the end was during the fourth video. Sorry, a little bit of a cliffhanger there, but it'll be worth it. Again, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that gave you some more information on another step in this female reproductive cycle, namely ovulation. Again, if you're not new to us, if you're not new to us, no, if you are new to us, please subscribe, ring the bell. Let us know your feedback, your comments below. We love your guys' questions. We can address them in the comments or even our weekly live sessions. And until next time, happy ovulation. Yeah.